It's Big Fish O'Clock. Let's go get them. Today, we're doing a full day grind for lake trout. Gonna try to make something happen. Let's go. What's up guys, it's Mac, we're back. Today we're out here with the full crew. I got Greg, uh, Greg was in the musky video and the video with Justin, and I got Ken. Ken Ames, he was in the Baker's Backcountry Brawl video. So check out those videos, fun videos, lots of laughs, good times. Um, today we're set up for trout. I'm just, just getting everything going. I'm gonna go around and throw the deadline and then we'll get back in here and do a bit more of a intro on what we're doing. Um, kind of the, the structure we're on and, and whatnot, but I'm gonna go throw this deadline out quick and get back in here. See our Cisco's freshly caught yesterday. By one of their guides here at the lodge, Amir. So we're gonna throw that bad boy down there. Oh, is that fresh? I'm just gonna give it a few battle wounds. I always like to gnarl them up a little bit. Just get the juices pumping. should be sufficient enough so I always like to hook them one hook right in the skull right between the eyeballs facing towards the tail and another one just right by the dorsal fin facing towards the spine or face towards the tail as well so like that centered down another thing I like to do is as my bait's sinking I just like to just grab my flare and just straighten out my line the best I can because it gets kind of memory and a little coiled up, so I like it to be as straight as I can on the way down. That way I know it's not sitting like a slinky all over top of the bait. So I just slide my fingers along it, just taunt, taking the memory out of the line. For the deadlines, I like to run a little bit of a longer leader, usually like 10 to 15 feet kind of deal. There we go. Alright, we're ready to rock. Let it buck. Okay. Alright, so we're in the tent, all set up now. Got the deadline down there. I'm gonna start up by throwing down this little I think it's called a meathead jig or knucklehead jig, bonehead jig, something like that. But I'm gonna start by throwing this bad boy down there. It's just a little green fluff ball jig. Let me turn that light down a little bit. There we go. There. That's a good crack. But yeah, we're gonna throw on this little, whatever it is, fluff jig. I don't really know. Not that it really matters anyway. Nothing special, just a little, basically a jig. Got a little piece of Cisco belly on there. We're gonna throw her down there and see what happens. Oh, hope the other boys are both set up, ready to rock. out the window perfecto I guess I kind of forgot to mention like what we're set up on today so today we're set up I got the two other guys with me Greg and Ken like I mentioned and we're set up in like a big kind of underwater ravine sort of deal like a trough so we're all set up in the bottom of the troughs so we've got deadlines on the sides and stuff but we're just spread out maybe over half a mile throughout the trough and we're just trying to pick off those fish that are roaming up and down it. A lot of times you'll get a lot of bait fish moving through them. So when you find the bait, you find the fish. So that's what we're kind of going for today. Already we're seeing some bait fish go by. I know Ken was telling me he's seeing a lot of bait. And Greg said he saw a lot of bait already too. And I'm seeing some schools move by too. So it's just a matter of time before the big trout start following the bait. It's still early. The sun's just coming up. We got out here in the dark, got set up, we're ready to rock. Put in a full shift, try to get that monster because it's big fish o'clock, baby. Man, is it windy out. 
Um, as you can see, there's already some bait coming in here on the screen. It's a little bit faint now, but there's some bait over to this side. There's some other fish cruising around here too. Haven't marked any significant marks yet, but I think that some of these uh, lonesome marks are lake trout. They're just not active yet. I am pretty confident that this bigger mark over here to the sides of lake trout just not up in a boat yet. Still sleeping. You know, some days you just set up your flag and you just are confident. Today's one of those days for me. I'm just confident it's going to go. It's going to go. It's going to pop. That's a lake trout coming in on the left side there, I think. Oh yeah, it's starting to come up to me. Yeah, here we go, here we go. Come on, give me another run. Bumped it. Come on, don't stop there. This other one's coming up now, holy man. That one flew up like crazy from the side. See there, got it like to be a little bit of a competition between the two. And that's why that one just flew up and smashed it. Holy smokes, bro! You're an angry trout. First laker of the day. Nothing special. Smash that whatever it is, meathead jig, bonehead jig, knucklehead jig. out already. It's a good sign. Monkey's off the back. First trout of the day. I have a good feeling we're going to catch some more today. You can see now on a live scope there's a lot of bait fish coming in. I always find in these uh, little underwater ravines and stuff as soon as that sun starts to come up that's when all the bait starts pushing down into there. You can see there's one big ball here, another big ball off to the right. Just becomes bait fish galore. That looks like a good mark there coming in up high. Up to the right side. That looks like a pretty substantial mark actually. So when they're coming in from the side like that, I always like to try to get a little bit above them. Just because the way that their eyes work, it's not like they're looking straight ahead, right? Well, you gotta think about like people. We're, we're like, if we're looking straight ahead, we can see far, but if we're looking up, we can see way farther, right? So it's like just that point of view. You gotta think about it like we can see the horizon far, but we can see like a water tower or like a cell tower way further, right? So that's like the kind of concept I try to go for is try to get a little bit up above them. There's another one coming in on the left side here now. I don't know where the one on the right went, but the one on the left looks decent-ish too. So as he comes in, I'm gonna try to speed up a bit. There he's starting to show interest, starting pulling away. pumping. Easy bro. Number two. Right in the snout. Right through the beak. Got that hook out. Getting better. Slowly but surely. Not to soak everything, bro. Perfect. So yeah, like I was saying there, like when they're coming in from the side like that, I always like to try to get above them just because it's like the point of view kind of concept. Like I was saying, it's like they can see so far, eye level, right? Just like we can, but we can see something up above way farther, right? So I like to try to get up above them just so they can see the contrast of the bait against the, against the ice or against the light. And I just feel like that helps them see it a lot further. All right, so I'm gonna reel up that Whatever it is, meat jig. I don't even know what it's called still. But whatever it is, I'm gonna reel it up. Throw on more confidence bait. So I'm gonna throw on this XL drop time tackle hunger strike. This is the glow. So I'm gonna throw this down there. It's got the blades, it's got some sound. I'm gonna tip it with a little bit of Cisco belly. I'm gonna see what happens. 
Okay, we got that meat thrown on that tube, like so. We're ready to rock. Turn that bad boy down there. Oh boy, there's one coming in up high right now. Connected. Walk out. Get that hook out of there. Look at the gut on this thing. It's so short, but it's like so stocky. Oh my goodness. This thing's got like a pot belly perch kind of look to it. I want to see this guy when he's 40 inches long. That'd be a mutant. Mutant. Little high flyer. Oh, fish rag's getting to work out today. That's good. I'd say that's definitely a big tip for just any ice fishing in general is just like a rag. It's so nice. You don't realize how nice it is until you don't have one and your hands are wet all day. You can only dry them on your pants so many times before your your pants don't even absorb anymore. Oh, there we go. This one's chasing. Swing to miss. Thing is, these fish just have such a freaking hard mouth, and you got to think too. It's like they're hitting it hard, but it's just like they're. I mean that for example is 65 feet away so it's like they're still hitting it hard but it's 65 feet away so you gotta set the hook so hard just to really jerk that hook into their face and you gotta think when they bite it when you set the hook you're pulling them too so it's a matter of getting that bait to slip in their teeth and positioning that hook into their face so it's not just a it's not just slinging it into their face it's ripping their mouth open and jamming that hook in so you really gotta lay into them and that was a failure Just shaving up a little bit of Cisco here, just to get some scent down there. You want to cut it up super, super fine because you don't want those fish eating it. Oh, there's a fish underneath me. Oh god! Oh god! Focus, focus! It's charging. I'm not missing this one. I think I almost knocked the head camera right off my head with that hook set. Oh boy, oh boy. Look out. Okay, got our lake choke. I think that's number four. You can see here that one smashed the head of the bait. That's something I really like about these hunger strike tubes is they have a treble right on the nose. So when those fish come and tee it up, because fish are usually feeding, oh gosh. Fish are usually feeding head first. So they're usually gonna attack the bait from the from the nose of it. So having that hook up at the front definitely gets you a lot more fish, I find. It is a little bit more dangerous, like front hooking them and stuff, but if you know the hook's there, you're good. But our lake choke, getting her down. Sweet. Still looking for that hog. See, so yeah, like I was saying with that treble on the nose, like this bait, it has a treble up on the nose of it. This is a little savagier treble I added after, but that bait up at the nose when those fish come to attack it they're going to usually tee it up at the front so a lot of times you they bite and you go set the hook and the hook's not even in their mouth right so you're setting it all you're doing is pulling that jig right out of their mouth but with this treble hook at least you're hooking them in the bottom lip or top lip with that extra hook points up at the front well, that's pretty good we didn't even lose that one and we hooked on the first try that's a big improvement but yeah i was just shaving up a little bit of cisco to get some scent down there I always like to have a little bit of scent on there, it just helps bring them in. But you don't want to be feeding them. Just a little bit of scent. You can definitely easily overdo it with chumming and ruin your chances, but just a little bit is good. All right, so I reeled up the XL tube. We're gonna throw down this little Element Custom Baits mug shot. This is probably my favorite color of Rowdy ever. This is like the most realistic looking bait I think I've ever seen in my life. It's just so crazy how real it looks. So we're gonna send this bad boy down there. And let her rip. Oh, that bait just looks so good. Oh, 
Hello? I don't know, I just got a call from Ken, so we're gonna go check out. Where What's going on? I got a big one on. Okay, I'm coming. All right, so Ken says he has a big one on. So we're gonna grab these cameras. Try to run over there. I'm not in that bad of shape, I promise. Oh. We made it. Cramp it up a bit. Good golly. Man, that was a sprint, dude. It's not dug into the ice too bad. There it shouldn't be. Oh, there he is. That's a good one. That's a good one. Gosh, a lot of smashing and crashing going on. Too much. A too lot much. of bubbles. Too much for my liking. I can't see anything. Here he comes. Okay. Nice. nice. nice Look fish. at that dude. He's got a big Cisco sitting on his throat. Big oh. burbot. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Well, at least he burped. I don't have a pump board in here. I'll have to grab one. Big burbot tail sticking on his throat. Look at that. It's a good sized fish, dude. Sure. Not too shabby, Ken. Nice. Is that your first lake trout of the season? First lake trout of the season. <laughs> Not a bad start, dude. Good. Nice fish. Want to get that burbot down that. there? Yeah, you can see that burbot tail right there. Just yummy, the yummy. Throat. Not too bad, bro. Get her down there. Right on. First 40 plus. First fish of the year for Ken. Tank. Doesn't happen every day. Tank. Buddy. Beauty. <laughs> Woo! That's sick. Was that a big mark too or not really? Oh, yeah. Really? That's sick. Like a big blocky, yeah. you know? I was like, looking. I'm still playing with this one. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to bottom. But like I said, went to bottom, just started coming up, and all of a sudden he come up and I'm like, boom! And it didn't feel very big. Because it was coming up with you. So I played it for a while. Yeah. And then, zzz, all the way to bottom. I'm like, oh, whatever, my drag's a little loose. Yeah. Got it to bottom and then I, every time it would run this way, I could get him back to here. But it wouldn't talk as soon as I started bottom. lifting him off bottom, he was like, zzz, zzz, really? and I was like, oh. All I, hear, all I hear is my phone ring. I'm like, huh, okay. And I just hear, bzz, 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 bzz. I'm like, okay, you got Dark Vader on the line. <laughs> well, after I'd say about close to a minute, minute and a half or yeah. so, that's when I was like, it's a big fish. That's when <laughs> that's I, awesome. I was like, Mac, <laughs> I got a big one. Like, got a big one. Like, and then I hear my phone going off, so I was like, <laughs> I'm looking, I'm holding it, and then just, I, I, I was able to just hold them. Just dogging? I mean? Oh yeah. That's wicked, dude. Alright, so we're back at the shack now. That was a sick fish Ken got. We're going to try to get one ourselves now. Ken said uh, he's been working a lot of bait fish, so that's good. We're in the same boat as him, if that's the case. Just got to get that giant. That fish just started charging up from the bottom. I was kind of thinking it was bait fish, but then it started engaging, so... Definitely lake choke. Oh my goodness. That's what you call a boat flipper. Put that guy down there on a deadline. Ah, that's probably the only reason I actually hooked him. Embarrassing. I'll go start somewhere though. That one kept and smashed it. That one's super squirrely. Definitely hammering the numbers, so that's good. Look at that, he just puked out like a beautiful Cisco. Look at this. As I was unhooking him, he just puked out this. Like perfect size Cisco. It's still alive! It's still alive! <laughs> It just peeked out a living Cisco. <laughs> uh, 
I've never seen that in my life. I've never seen him puke out a live one. That's crazy. That's nuts. <laughs> so, another lake trout on the Element Custom Baits. That's hilarious. It's still live. So now that I see like the size of bait they're feeding on, I'm actually just going to take a quick peek at my box because I got a bait that almost is exactly like this. So take a look at that. That's the Z-Man bait. I guess I might be able to show you like this. Let me turn this down a bit. So that's the Z-Man bait. This is that Cisco. Oh gosh, it's still flopping around like crazy. So this is that Z-Man and that's that Cisco. That's pretty freaking close. So I'm gonna rig up this Z-Man on my other rod here and then throw this down just cause this is like matching the hatch, you know? You gotta do it. So now that I got this bad boy rigged up. We're gonna throw this guy down there, see what happens. I just feel like how can you not after seeing that fish puke out like a Cisco the exact same size. All right, we got a fish coming in up high here. This is the first fish that's gonna see the Z-Man bait. Well, that didn't take long at all. I don't even think that fish looked at it. It just instinctively just killed it. That'll be our biggest fish so far, I think. Not awful huge, but probably like a 10 pounder. Yeah, I'd say it's about a 10 pounder. So like a 30 inch or 31 inch or 32 inch maybe. No giant, but getting there. Nothing demolish that bait. Look at that. Right by the skin of the teeth. Pops right out. That's why it's so important to keep tension on them. That's not a bad fish at all. Easy there, Tiguan. Not too shabby. Getting there. Getting better. One fish at a time. No live Cisco's coming out of that one. Beauty. Oh! That was rude. I'm definitely thinking this bait's gonna become a confidence bait for me this winter. Okay, the flag just popped up as Greg was walking over. Just grabbing the tools. Coming through! walking over and then I hear the flag pop and I'm like oh he might be messing with me and then oh dude your flag's up <laughs> Ken's coming dude Greg was literally walking over and I hear the flag pop and I thought Greg just kicked it or Georgette ran into it and he's like dude your flag just went up <laughs> that's a big is that the big ticket big ticket that's bro. the big ticket she's buckled nice this fish has got to be good one, fighting hard. beat my 40 plus. Yeah, I've got to try to beat Ken's 40, 40 plus. You gotta be 40 plus, buddy. I think this will beat it. It's fighting so good. It's gotta be getting closer. I feel like it's a lot more movement now. Oh yeah, that's a leader. Here's the leader, so you should be able to see yeah. it. Oh, there he is, right here, right here. Look at, that's a big mama. Big mama, come, come get the video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big mama. Can you see it? Big mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it look sick, Greg? Oh, sick, man. That's a big fish, man. Dude, that's, that's big. That's a big, big, big fish, dude, buddy. that's really big, dude. Yeah. Like, that's gigantic. Yeah, man. I don't know if you're getting through that hole, buddy. Dude, that's gigantic, Ken. Yeah. Like, that's huge, that's dude. That's huge, That's man. massive. It's big fish. Like, holy smokes, man. It's got a burbot sticking out his mouth, too. Okay. I'm gonna grab it. Okay. I'm grab it. I got him. Got him? I got him, dude. Okay, I got the rod. Go ahead. Dude, that's a freaking gigantic Tank. fish. Woo! Oh, my gosh. Dude. Oh, my gosh. Look at the size of that freaking thing. That's so sick. That's so huge. Look at that. It's got a burbot and the Cisco sticking out his throat. That's so sick. 42. 42. I beat you, bro. 42. 42, you baby. You did beat me. Yeah. Can you see its whole fish? Yeah. Ready? Yep. Man, is that ever fat? Look at that big beast. That's a warrior. <laughs> 